Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. Don't forget, again, I don't mention this enough. VIP program. Take a look at it. It's every show we've ever done, including all the spinoff shows, for merely $1.99. That's at ktg.com slash trial. Today's guest, oh my goodness, featured on the HBO series High Maintenance. Rates and performs for NYC sketch comedy duo Skinny Bitch Jesus Meeting. That was featured in the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, NYC Fringe Austin Sketch Festival. Oh, my God. <laughs> Co-creator and co-star of the web series Made to Order. Whew. I mean, it's, I'm a pretty big deal. I mean, all these people know exactly each of those things. Ladies and gentlemen, Katie Hartman. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? This is why I think people should um, <laughs> watch the video sometimes. It's, all of them are on YouTube. And um, just while Keith is reading the credits, first credit, I believe her response was, oh, yeah, I did that. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Second response was like, yep, definitely did that. And it was just this kind, like, she's just co-signing your stuff. Yep, right. good research, very good. <laughs> yeah. I, and also, I am so just, I am just so aware that of the number of people who've watched the, the smaller things that are mine, you know what I mean? You're that, like, busy judging yourself and what you do. Yeah, and like how big of a reach it does not have. But right. everyone should go watch it because it's very good. You sold it perfectly just now. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. I'm very good at this. I have some exciting news. My parents, uh, you know, they, they flat out tell me more and more, when, are, when am I going to be grandparents, have kids, you know, that kind of thing. And th- they're so uh, sick of waiting that they bought me a kid. <laughs> I'm like, if this is his fucking <laughs> pregnancy announcement, that would make sense. Oh, that's the way that you would do it. Every every day, they anytime they call me, they always bring up uh, how good of a parent I would be. And what what are the context clues? I, they hate your job. <laughs> they, they they think you're hardly. They keep telling you to come move back home because it'll be better than what you're doing as an adult. Right. And but you should have an a, like another life to take care of. Uh, and. I, I go, of course I would. First of all, I'm so good with these dogs God. that having a kid would only be easier. Do you know that your wife brought that up to me on the day oh, of your man. birth this year? <laughs> She's like, he keeps saying it's so easy. It makes me worried. It's, it is easier. When you're, <laughs> than dogs? Of course. When your child okay. is teething, do they take out the cable? <laughs> <laughs> no, they just shit on it. I wish I could just, if I wasn't in the mood, put, a, uh, put my dog in a crib all day. I mean, you could, but then you'd be arrested. Right. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, did you, do you, when you have kids, let me ask for the parents out there, do you have to worry about one kid eating the other kid's shit? Is that a thing? <laughs> well, at what age? Somebody said yes. One person said yes. At what age can you stop <laughs> picking the shit off the floor? Do you know what I mean? But a dog, you do it its whole life. You got to take it outside. Yeah, but kids don't die at like 14 to 20. So that's like, I don't know, is that a good part, a bad part? Yeah, also like you are not the one who has to breastfeed the child for like a full like two years or whatever it is. You know what I mean? You'd be surprised the things I got to do with these dogs. all right. They they were puppies. You got to do everything. I All right. You know, they latch. They latch on. Mm -hmm. They have sharp teeth. And by the way, yeah, of course, they die early. These dogs compared to children. So okay. they I never... just wanted to make sure that you specified which of those we were talking <laughs> right. about. The ones I shake, they just seem to die. They disappear. They're never going to pay you back for all the hard work that you did. They're never going to get a job. They're just going to walk around dopey with their tongue out. But they will also always love you as opposed to going through a teenage time mm. when they're going to like talk back to you, right? I'm, I'm skipping that time. Okay. When I have kids. They... they they leave uh, during the troubled teenage years and then come back. Oh, they leave. So it's yeah. you stay and they leave. I call it the, uh, what, what do you call it when you send the- Boarding school. A birthright. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if someone's like dealing with their kid right now, just yelling into their device, just going like, hey, if it's so easy, why don't you come over here? And I'm like, this is what Keith does to people. He just says shit, they get riled up, <laughs> and he shrugs. I mean, yeah. You can't have dogs in these New York City apartments, but you can have children. Why is that? <laughs> Something to think about. That's true. If you're locked outside, your kid can eventually open the door for you. Right. If you need a babysitter. <laughs> I don't, I'm trying. I don't, I've never had either. So. <laughs> if you need a babysitter for your human child, 
You just, just go. Him you just you're right. You just get somebody off the fucking street. You go, hey, who do, who do you know? You know the neighbor, the 14 year old kid comes over. But if you need a dog walker, you're like, do you have qualifications? Do you own your own dog walking business? How many dog? You know what? In all fairness, it's a so bigger it's a bigger process. Hubby Face has been like, uh, he's trying for Wag the app, and so uh, by Hubby Face, you're talking about Baby Butt, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are getting to know each other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mush Face, Cutie Pie, Munchkin Face, <laughs> otherwise known as Hennessy. Yes, some yes. of you may know. I don't know. People are try- are starting to call him baby butt, like in public. Mm. We, ha- we just had like, oh, it's totally fine. All um, right. Yeah, I know. I don't know how I would feel about about that. I would have that same face as you, and I I noticed like I used to I call him Land a lot. So people who are um, around us call him Land. They start calling him Land, and I'm just like, is this okay? And he's like, I'm okay with it. I'm like, it's my name for you. Is that okay? Somehow he landed on okay, so I'm okay with it. Great. So anyway, Baby Butt <laughs> is uh, applying for WAG, which means he gets to walk people's dogs. This has been like a daily thing. He had to watch. I watched it with him. We watched like a 10 or 20 minute video. Then he has to answer questions. Then he like has to go through rules and he has to answer questions. And like our friends are like, you want to take care of our kid? I'm just like. Where's all the watching a video and yeah. asking a question? We're like, oh, like I feel like Lyft and Uber drivers, like they also go through less of a training yes. than that. He actually did go through Uber and Lyft as a bike messenger. Oh yeah, you just have to show up. They give you a bag and you go. He still has to do his intake, meaning go in. He has to answer leash laws. Like, what do you do if the dog? Ooh, do you guys know this? What do you do if the dog starts running away? You, you, that's it. You shoot it. You just shoot you it. You got to put it out of its misery. You got to shoot it in the leg so that it's not like a deadly shot. So it's crippled. You for guys a are so close. Now, Han, you walk. You walk for Wag. I don't know if you're public about this. <laughs> I mean, uh, now Hennessy, meaning my baby butt. <laughs> what do you do when a dog runs away? You don't want to yell at it, uh, and you don't want to chase it, uh, but you would want to But you do have to get it. Yeah, you have to get it. Uh, If you have treats, try and get down on its level. If it's going into traffic, yeah, I mean, you've got it. Okay. Yeah. The right answer was run the other way. (laughs) What? Oh, so it chases you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I thought, so then, (laughs) yes, because it's just like a child where you're like, all right, then I'm just going to go home, and eventually they just start following you. Yeah. Huh. Well, I what I don't like with this wag, and I, I use them, but and they always do a good job. But uh, Hennessy wanted references, and oh, yeah. so so I go, okay, I, she doesn't eat dogs, you know. <laughs> and so then they say, okay, you put the put your phone number in, and then click this box if it's okay to call you and to send you promotional material. And it's like. <gasps> So Felt like that should be two different boxes. It's a little shady, right? That's yeah. super shady. Yeah. So wait, with WAG, is it just that you, if you work for them, you could just be walking around at any moment, just get like a buzz on your phone being like, you're close to this person who wants you to... It's sort of like the Lyft and Uber for uh, dogs. So you can be like, I'm turning it on, now I'm available, now I'm going to get notices. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. I think my what's happening with my parents pushing me to have a kid is that as I grew up, they kept telling me, you know what, you're going to have a kid that's going to be just like you. Mm. And I think now they're like, motherfucker, he's not going to have a kid just like him, is he? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, my parents used to wish, I hope you have 10 just like you. I'm like, I don't <laughs> I don't think I did something that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, I'm a pretty honest kid. Like, okay. Oh, man. Have they, like, have they, I don't know, do they give you a timeline? They're like, you need to have a kid by this certain time. Well, they're always th- they're always threatening that they're going to die, so I ha- I just better hurry up. Okay, that's unspecific. Yeah, very unspecific, but it's been happening for decades. Do you and Cat talk about it? Or are we, you like, yeah, I'm talking already with my parents? We t- about having a kid. We talk about it, mm. but very pretty flippantly. Yeah, so you're not like in planning stages or anything. No. There's no timeline. There's no anything. Correct. Are you concerned about your sperms at all? No. At your age, uh, no, I don't know about the potency of them, but sure, I have millions. <laughs> Congratulations! Know. There's, I'm not worried about a shortage. <laughs> you just made like three babies this morning, right? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I, I love how guys see stuff coming out of their out of their penis and they're like, I could definitely make babies like a bunch of them. Yeah, oh I can make so many. <laughs> There's these villages we just waste. I yeah. don't know if you can make babies, but you could certainly make glue. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> but also like if you put a microscope up to it, it's like how many of those spermies are actually like good ones? Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Like some of I, them are going to have like two tails and some of them like are just going to be going in circles. Honestly, I do look at them after I ejaculate. Pardon? And they're pretty, they're pretty, they're pretty good. How many microscopes have you gone through? Uh, well, I don't throw away the microscope. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Some people, America's wasteful, you know? <laughs> I assume that there should be like a, like an app where you can take a picture of your Ooh. ejaculation, and then like they can just sort of di- do a diagnostic of what it is That'd if it's great. okay. Uh, there, you up for it? Th- there's a, gonna be I don't know how it works, but there's gonna be an app like that. Really? Si- yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm working on it right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All, right. All right. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna do a Kickstarter for it? <laughs> yes. Come see my sperm. dot com. <laughs> no, I think we talked about it, and it could it could uh, it's going supposedly it's gonna say how. You know how potent. uh mm, you are potent. <laughs> was the word I was looking for. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, because you're gonna have to attach it to how mm, you are. Right. It has nothing to do with just sperm. No, no, no. No, it's all representational. Yes, that's how big your penis is. Mm. That's how much pleasure you bring to people. I would like my kid to be able to be around our dogs. Then you have to have so a So that's my time limit. <laughs> oh so yeah. So I have thirteen years. Oh, so. I see. <laughs> <laughs> but and you know I got these dogs trained nicely. My walking skills, by the way, do you know? Listen, you might as well work for Wag. Listen to this, Katie. I go no leash. What? Yeah, and the dog's just right there, like my bitch. You Literally. Know? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't mean it F- derogatory. Dog? Okay. Yeah, 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 female dog. And uh, oh, I'm so good. I go to the dog park. It's the cutest thing, and the ca- it oh it catches like a, a better than a football player. You throw something, a ball in the air. It doesn't even rape on the way in. Always good. No <laughs> rapes. Have you uh, thought about... No um, murder. Have you thought about having your dog audition for the NFL? Oh. You know what? Honest, Puppy bowl. They, they, they're only doing humans still. Well, I mean, you know, like you show them Air Bud enough, right? Yeah, I mean, right. like they did... I'm sure there's a football one, right? There has to be a sequel to Air Bud that's a football one. Keith, you know all the football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do know all the football. <laughs> You know all those football dog movies, right? <laughs> t- it would. My it's all do- related. <laughs> if I knew how you do, you get a dog agent, uh, that kind of thing. We'd be we'd be millionaires. My dogs are so so good, and I, you know what? Wait, uh-huh. if you had a child, mm-hmm. it would be the same exact thing, right? I mean, if you had a child, you'd be like, my child's the best. Yeah, I'd have it off the leash. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you'd make your child a little model, a they'd, baby model. They'd be catching things mm-hmm. with their mouth. Yeah, I get, th- women, lo- they love seeing me with these dogs. Oh, yeah. There, There's a sign. I'm not exaggerating. There's a sign at the dog park for women to clean up after themselves when I come around and bring the dogs. Drip, drip. You know what I'm saying? I, I understand exactly what you're saying. They must yeah. all be wearing um, no underwear right. and skirts and dresses. Is that... Is that, who, is that the dog park you go to? They're like, clean up an aisle wherever Keith is showing off his puppies. You know what I'm saying? It's very... It's very strange. I feel like you need to watch your dogs around these particular people. <laughs> yeah. It's just cute. It's just cute. <laughs> That's the word I would use. Right. I would say cute. <laughs> and also like, I what, you know, cutest. I, you know, it's like when I see a puppy, that's immediately mm-hmm. where all of my, my, um, liquid in my body just goes straight mm-hmm. to my vagina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then please, I'm walking around with two puppies. I oh mean, my God. not on Both a leash. of my vaginas are super <laughs> wet. <laughs> I start lactating. <laughs> I have this great Even my butt is moist. <laughs> I have this That's just because it's summer though. Well it's listen. So hot. The dogs are still cute, so both things exist at the same time. <laughs> They're very insecure. We have to give them this. I like to take I, I invented a dog treat, but it looks like a chocolate candy bar. And then when I'm around people, I'm like, You're such a good dog, here you go. And they're like, No, they can't have chocolate. I'm like, just a little bit. Here you go. <laughs> monster it's a good time <laughs> and then and then he like writes down which friend fell for it and which friend didn't and mm-hmm. that's how he assesses who comes over his house again yeah his parties are super fun <laughs> just all the people who are like were, are easily tricked yeah you, he gets things done he assesses 
it's it's science really it's good to know who you want to hang out with and um if they're too smart for you for your mm-hmm. tricks yeah and have like a true basis of where their brain mm-hmm. is have you ever um actually given your dogs chocolate though Ooh, ooh, harsh harsh vibes harsh, i don't know yeah no okay My just dog, checking got, wow kenda can't wrap me out fast <laughs> enough uh, but the dog did find chocolate in a purse and ate it and it was cocoa and that's apparently the worst kind for chocolate tea for dogs to eat <laughs> but everybody's okay good yeah i didn't say we're both good parents <laughs> oh that's what you should do when your parents ask you why you're not having kids she just gave the dogs chocolate. <laughs> now imagine what she's going to give our kids. Easy. Right. <laughs> poison. Yeah. Straight up poison. <laughs> she's starting company. Starting a family. That's down yeah. the line. Catherine's doing fine. She's making a chocolate and onion sandwich for my dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's my fave. <laughs> but I'm a be, bitch. How fun would it be if you could throw your voice and then you can make your dogs talk? Mm. You know, that'd be a superpower. If somebody asked me, could you throw your, throw your voice or fly? I'd have to debate. That'd be so cool to throw your voice, to be in a movie theater and yell something like somebody else said it. Mm. What would you yell? Fuck off. (laughs) You'd probably like, you know, have more time to come up with other things once you have the talent. This movie is stupid. (laughs) This is all the stuff that Keith needs to let out, but will not. (laughs) We're a group of loud teenagers and we're pieces of shit. We (laughs) snuck into this movie and we don't even have enough shame to be quiet. (laughs) Fuck off. (laughs) To start fights all day. So you just, you just want to be like passive aggressive about your fighting. Hey, fuck you. I'll fight anybody. <laughs> hey, we all agree on this, but I'm definitely the one saying it over here in the front corner. <laughs> I want to see like all those teenagers just like looking at each other and Who's be like, who it? said it? <laughs> who said it? Guys, you're going to get us in trouble. <laughs> There's just like one old man in here. I don't know where <laughs> this is coming from. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a movie at 3.30 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> it's just you and teenagers. Why, why Shouldn't you kids be in school? Where's that coming from? <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't we be in school? <laughs> like on a subway, you know? And just yell, have somebody say, I'm such a jerk off. I can't believe it. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if pe- people Do you have get that- high now because these are high thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if somebody's able to throw their voice and they don't have fun like this, I think that if a dog, if you could throw your voice and make your dogs yeah. talk, that would be fun. I'm a dog, drip drip. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. Especially when you so have the voice of a dog already, <laughs> 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 like you just know their inner child, like you do. I'm a talking dog. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> Isn't that rad? People would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, no, it's cool, man. I'm just a talking dog. <laughs> but meanwhile, he could say all this shit and be flying around. Yeah. Like, you can go like, those oh, right. shouldn't you be in school? And then just fly out. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I'll take he, flying. Keith uses his superpowers to be like the best old man with a cane. It's really loud out there. But he throws his voice. <laughs> You'll never get me. I would love that. Just walking around the city, <laughs> throwing your came, voice. That p- <laughs> just came thinking about it. That honestly, that would be like one of the greatest things. Just I'm gonna try to t- dead in the fucking camera. I wonder if I could teach my kids to do that. If you train them early, that'd be giving them all the possibilities of life. To do what? To drip? To throw your voice? To throw your voice? Right. To drip? Hundo? No, dripping is it's it has to be experienced. Not it's would not you, how would that even be a guess? No. I just, you know, to throw your voice. I to, got excited. I'm just like, to come constantly? I'm like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> to, to throw your voice. To, to, use, to use magical powers for passive aggressive behavior. Which part? <laughs> Sounds pretty aggressive. Or to, to like, me. understand your body and your mind so well that you can turn yourself on no matter what. I like that. <laughs> uh, I like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then the kid gets nothing done. True. Yeah, no. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I've lost days. Mm-hmm. But they are just like satisfied. So that's true. <laughs> you know, what do you want out of life? Yeah, yeah but w- then you see them every day and you're like, are you doing it again? <laughs> you know, I'm doing it, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> just finish your vegetables. I have a superpower. <laughs> I don't tell you to stop flying around and throwing your voice. <laughs> you gave this to me. I do it because I of learned you. it from watching you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the number one movie, speaking of movies over the weekend, The Fate of the Furious. That was predictable. Yeah, that was... No, they that, have been pushing that movie at us real hard. What is that? Number eight in The Fast and the Furious. Oh, come but, on. But, but 
Rock. You yeah, but here's the thing: like The Rock is in it, mm-hmm. uh, Vin Diesel's in it. Everybody is in this actors movie. Actors are in this one. Real actors. No, and there is a huge budget. Uh, they they not only drift, they throw their voice. <laughs> I don't even think they drift anymore. I think they just steal gigantic things. I mean, as far as the trailer is concerned. There's a family rift, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. F- yeah. Family's the most important, but he's going to go against his family this time. Can you believe it? Sometimes you make your own family. He Do they does. have that line? Uh, yeah, they did. <laughs> I watched this movie, of course. Oh, you did? Yeah, I see everything. And and then I, and I just have to, but I can't throw my voice. You know what I mean? I can't have, Do you know how many 3D glasses I have? <laughs> About 70. You bought them? I earned them the hard way. <laughs> This is what he does on the weekends. He throws his voice, he practices, and he goes just, to the movies. And he hoards 3D glasses. Well, the thing is, is he talks for a living. So he goes to places where for two hours nobody asks him anything. Yeah. So these Fast and Furious movies, it's where, like, for example, Vin Diesel's on the moon, right? And then he'll jump to planet Earth, but he won't die because he tucked and rolled. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, It's that, It's that action physics. Yeah. Mm. So it's a, it's a little goofy. That's like, you know, they, they, they make those quote unquote for boys, you know, and so like the action movie mm-hmm. is always like you drop out of like the sky, but you tuck and roll and you're fine. So they make that like the, the girl version is the, um, the, com- the, the uh, romantic comedy and like their version of jumping out of a plane is like rushing to like make sure that you get married in time and your tuck and roll is saying I do. It just seems mm-hmm. formulaic. Yeah. Uh, Andrew is saying, my boyfriend legitimately likes the movie. Is it time to break up? Ooh. It's, a, it's, a, it's a goofy, fun superhero movie. I didn't mind it. And I like, I like Kurt Russell. Mm. Is it I say dust in the wind. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> he needs dead. <laughs> Wait, so with the... It, you've seen all eight movies? No. Oh. I, oh. I saw the first one. Was, I hated it. But they did. But they weren't ninjas back then. They just they, dro- they just drove cars. Then I don't know if I saw part of the second one or not. That's how bad it was. And then I skipped them. And then I saw the seventh one because Kurt Russell was in it. Is Kurt Russell in both of them? Was he in in eight seven too? and eight? Yeah, yeah. I mean, God bless. Mm-hmm. God bless. That yeah. Man. How would he do? Uh, he lives after seven. Does he say I'm too old for this or something like this? No. No? Does he have an eye patch? He does all those snake Pliskin lines, yeah. Yeah, does he? No. (laughs) That would be great, though. I mean, that's like the style of movie, right? Right. I mean, like. He goes, I have to escape New York. (laughs) Did you like his character? Yeah, he's a cool cat. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the movie, it's good. It's good. I don't think you have to, I don't think you have to break up with him, though. Okay. Congrats, Andrea. You still have a boyfriend. (laughs) Uh, by the way, there's there will be at least two more Fast and Furious movies. If you look at IMDb, you see that uh, there's a Fast and Furious Nine. Whoa, it's already on IMDb. And Ooh, we should do like our upcoming things on IMDb. Hey, guess what? Upcoming <laughs> Keith and the Girl Camp. It's already on IMDb. We had a great time, and we will in two years from now too. Uh, it's supposed to be released in 2019. Vin Diesel stars as Dominic Toretto in the ninth edition of the hugely successful Fast and Furious franchise from Universal Studios. Wow. It, and then in 2021, Fast and Furious 10, the Fast and Furious franchise comes to its high octane finale in the 10th edition. Oh. Unless, unless like, they're like, actually, let's keep going. Yeah. yeah. Why would you quit? I mean, these, these movies are huge. They make so much money. They make so much money. Right now, it's only been two weekends. A hundred sixty-three million dollars. Oh my god! Yeah, I'd it, be what seeing that IMDb. I'd be so scared to die. That's so weird. Well, I mean, pa- Paul Walker died. Oh, who yeah. was in? Who okay. was in them? So, so then I have. So good you reason. know what? There's somebody already set a precedent. Okay, and so it's okay. We know what to do now. Yeah, they just okay. uh, hire Kurt Russell, <laughs> and they continue with their lives. I guess so. I, I can't tell if I'm more scared to die now. I don't know if it's a sad. It's sad. It's weird. There's a lot of beef, bad blood between The Rock and Vin Diesel. Is there? They're saying Vin Diesel is not uh, not professional. And The Rock is saying, are you fucking professional or what? I, it sounds like two egos, right? But if I had to pick, Vin Diesel has a bigger ego. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's shorter, so he has more to is prove it? to himself. Oh, is yeah. He, who's, isn't he tiny? who's not shorter than is The Rock? Is he not? 
I don't actually know, guys. I don't think I've ever seen a movie with Vin Diesel in it. <laughs> I don't know. How can you judge? I don't know. Uh, he's saying Vin Diesel was uh, extremely unprofessional. Everybody on the set apparently says he's an asshole. Like in what way? Uh, for ex- He won't work before 10 a.m. What? No matter what. No. <laughs> yeah. Like how much? How many millions does it take for someone to work before ten a.m.? Right. Well, he's got to, you know. You know what? Center in, himself. In between these big blockbuster movies, these guys really need to get like a nine to five for honestly just a week, right. just one week, just to remind them that acting is not really a job that should pay you millions of dollars. And I say this, and I would take the millions of dollars to be an actor, but you should understand that's stupid. <laughs> This wasn't the first time Diesel has reportedly caused problems on the set in 2014 while shooting Furious 7. He spent a whole day locked in his trailer, then demanded that Universal execs show up so he could berate them for two and a half hours, according to a Hollywood reporter. The next day on set, work was done by stunt doubles. Ugh. Uh, I, but the, the thing is that he can do anything he wants, especially in the middle of shooting a movie. They're not going right. to shut, they're going to halt production. Because they know at the end they're going to get whatever $163 million in two weekends. Uh, One celebrity publicist says, Vin is always a douche. (laughs) 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 Vin Uh, is always a douche. (laughs) People know it. He's always a douche. Uh, Number two movie, The Boss Baby. And I can't, that angers you. It makes me so angry that this whole thing exists and the way that they're marketing it and that Alec Baldwin has been in my face like uh, for like three weeks. Is he getting overexposed? Yeah, he like has a book out. So he's like on all these magazines. He's like being interviewed on podcasts that I regularly listen to that I don't want to hear him on. Hmm. Are things getting like are the same questions being asked? I just he there's something about him right now. That I'm just like, okay, everyone's praising you so hard. Right. Just get fuck, get over yourself. You mm-hmm. fuck. Like, like, just get over yourself. It's very... Um, fun. Uh, yeah, it's great fun mm-hmm, for me. Mm-hmm. No, it's... it's Rewarding. Th- it is hard. I don't know what it is, um, except that, you know, he's just a very... He's a rich guy who's been famous for a long time and, like, does not interest... He thinks he's very funny. Are you going with this one week of nine to five thing? Oh, do you yes. Like, do you like I, this philosophy? I, well, except for him, I don't think that I don't think that it would work. Can you imagine? Poor Katie goes to get a coffee at Starbucks <laughs> and there's Alec Baldwin again. Yeah. <laughs> Just I bet like Getting if he worked at Starbucks, wrong. he would write his name on every single book. <laughs> like that's that's who he is. Just so he can spread more of himself in the world. I guess you can have the option of throwing it back in his face, like I said extra dry cappuccino. <laughs> right. I, if it was dry, none of this would have been on your face. But what if you made the perfect cappuccino and I had to be like, all right, I guess I guess you're pretty great at this. Right. All right. So the boss baby is, you know, an adult baby, if you will. You've seen the trailers. And I'm convinced, and I can't find this online anywhere, that the the brother, you know, the fake brother in the in the movie walks in on the baby making some kind of deal and he's just trying to act like a baby. And he goes Fuck. Oh, really? Uh, mm. I'm sure that this happened. I can't believe like it's not making news. Well, not everybody's father did the exact same thing <laughs> where they want to copy. Right. <laughs> this was like an ongoing thing that Keith's dad did. Oh, my God. He would curse and then try to cover it up. And he would say like, shit, ski bibble. What? <laughs> what? I'm just scatting. Shit, ski bibble. Be ba 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 da ba. Shit, ski bibble. Ba 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 da ba. Uh, I and when I was looking it up, I if where and I can't find it anywhere, but I came across a a review in Parent Magazine. I don't know if this magazine is religious or not, but here's some of the review saying, "Is it okay to take your kids to this movie?" There to, is to Baby Boss, Boss Baby. Yeah, mm. uh, there are some perilous situations in the film, such as the high speed chase to Las Vegas, where Tim and his baby brother are being pursued. Potentially scary scenes are imagined by seven year old Tim attacking animals, creepy hallways, looming figures, and a brief sequence in which the kids investigate a mysterious dark room and are subsequently captured. But that sounds like every Disney movie. Yeah, It sounds like every kid's like, a witch catches you, you have to eat your way out of her house, she tries to throw you in the oven. It's a high-speed chase, but you're in a crib. Somebody kisses you while you're sleeping, and then you have to thank them. Oh, my God. (laughs) 
I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. You have to thank them? No, you have to marry them. Well, that's it's a thankless job, I guess. <laughs> There's a scene in which it's implied that Tim drinks a Long Island iced tea and didn't like it, although this will probably fly over the heads of most youngsters. It flew over my head. I don't know what the fuck this mm. person's talking about. Oh, wait, did you go see that movie? Yeah, I see everything. Oh, my God. You spent money? You no. Gave, you gave the money to the man? I have a. I pay for a monthly movie pass. So. Oh, well, that's smart. Yeah, I get them. Boss booked, baby, booked. you saw, did you watch it with kids in the? Were there kids there? There were. Yeah, there were kids there. I'm sure. Did you feel like it was inappropriate? That I was there. Would or, you take no. your dogs to it? <laughs> that's funny. I was, I was there with my dogs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're right, Keith. They don't let dogs in a movie theater. That's rough. Yeah, it's rough. No, get out yeah. of here. Get yeah. Out of here. Yeah. yeah, they don't because they're harder to deal with. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, of course. Co-signing your bullshit. <laughs> well, the way you say it, though. Um, this, uh, and then the, the article says, it may bother parents because they're telling you where babies come from, that they're manufactured in a factory. So we all know God makes the babies, not, uh, not that's factory. The boys also travel to Las Vegas on their own, which may need to be explained that they are really too young to travel alone and unsupervised. <laughs> but, home, but Home Alone was a kid's movie. Yeah, kids should know that. Kids know that they are not allowed to go travel to Vegas by themselves. Yeah. So they shouldn't run on the wing of an airplane and get inside and go to Vegas? Okay. So that's, who cares? And also, I don't know that that's a Christian thing, that last one. There's also a thug who dressed like a woman and looks like a transvestite in order to subvert authorities, which is treated as humorous. So she doesn't, this uh, writer doesn't find it very humorous for somebody to dress up as a transvestite. Well, I don't know. This sounds a little more liberal than what you're saying because it sounds like she's like, that's not the tactic, the tactics that you would use. Yeah, that's punching down. It's yeah. like making, making fun of a man who's dressing as a woman. Like that's the joke as opposed yeah. to something else. At the end of the movie, it appears that a same sex couple is adopting a baby, but it turns out to be the two brothers from the story now grown up as adults. I got. I don't want to brag, but I got it right away. I don't know what she's talking about. And obviously, she's complaining. Writer, yeah. She's obviously complaining. You think it's going to be a gay couple? Ugh. But it's not. Don't worry. But just so you know, your kid might think it's a gay couple. That's so interesting that people still say things like you will have to explain to your kids that gay exists, and it's right. like, well, did you explain to kids that gay doesn't exist? Mm-hmm. Like, did. Did you have to explain that mommy and daddy are a straight couple? Like, it's a couple. Yeah. Relax yourself already enough. I feel like kids who would see something like that, if there was, like, a thing where you manufacture babies in, like, a, in a, what, in a factory? Right. Is that what it is? Yeah. I feel like then some of them, for a couple years, would think that that is what it is. Yeah, but they also, you're, at the same time, this parent, I bet, is saying Santa Claus exists. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So, like, yeah. You well, you don't want to, like, tell them, oh, no, like, they don't come from a, they don't come from a factory. Because then the next question is, right. where do they come from? Then you're like, ah, oh, fuck. A factory. That's so stupid. Fact. Explain. <laughs> am I wrong? Explain to your kids where babies come from at any age. In in their age words. What, I, yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, my, my uh, sister-in-law is, uh, was pregnant, and they already have a kid. He's, like, two. And so, no, she's just fat. Don't worry about it. Lot, and then like, suddenly a baby appears. Yeah. Is that what fat is? And, and tell them, yeah, tell them how babies are made. They'll be so grossed out. They won't <laughs> have one. And that's good. Daddy takes his pee stick and he, I mean, it's disgusting. Wait, Keith, is that what happened to you? No, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Shia LaBeouf came out with a movie called Man Down. And they put it in one theater in the UK and only sold one ticket. So the, the movie made $8.73. He's so artsy. So like picture you go, you're his friend. I feel like he did it on purpose. And yeah, you're like, I feel like he bought that ticket. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Shia, congrats on, on that movie. Yeah, I saw it. No, you didn't. Or you would have made the front page. Ooh, that's so <laughs> perfect. No one saw it. I know it for a fact. Oh, but how that's was it a released great only in one movie theater? He's noticed. I, I guess they knew it wouldn't be good and they're just, you know, trying to see... Is this worth putting in other theaters? But there's there's more PR on the fact that there was one ticket sold than, you know, tickets are available. Right. I don't remember seeing tickets being available. No. Uh, in New York City, you've probably heard this before, if you take a penny and throw it off the Empire State Building, it could kill a person. I heard that, mm-hmm. yeah. That is not true. I heard that too, but I was <laughs> like, you know what, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> right. I have a feeling that one day it can kill someone and I would be the one. 
the coin. <laughs> that's right. weird. You you are so you like your hands are so magical that it would defy physics. That's one way of looking at it, but just the other way is like my this dumbest thing would happen to me. So unlucky. You're yeah. so unlucky yes. that you would murder somebody unwittingly. I I just I feel like <laughs> I would hurt someone by accident like that. Like uh you know, my husband um Hurts his arm. That's the one I lean on all day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I always do that. So yeah. my penny would be the one to go through someone's head. Got like a big backpack on in the subway, and then you like turn around, you knock somebody yes. into the tracks. Yes. Just murder somebody outright. Yeah. Yes. Anytime I put in an air conditioner, or take it out, I always go, "You almost died. Somebody yeah. almost died." Today's the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is that is one of the biggest fears about like walking down the street and just like mm-hmm. having having an air conditioner fall on me and just like or just my legs i don't know why we're so comfortable switching out heavy air conditioners through our window you're literally holding it so it doesn't fall and a lot of people closing it yeah yeah (laughs) and a lot of people like dangerous i got this i'm doing this myself i'm like why right why it's like the the guy walking down the street will help you so that it doesn't land on his head (laughs) yes we got this Uh, If you dropped a coin from the Statue of Liberty, excuse me, from the Empire State Building, the coin would bounce off with a little more than a light sting. A penny has a terminal velocity of just 25 miles per hour, and the coin would tumble as it fell, slowing it. You would live. I would like to throw a penny at you at 25 miles an hour, and then you turn around and go, no worries. (laughs) A baseball would strike your head at about 95 miles per hour, the speed of a major league fastball, leaving you with a nasty but survivable concussion. A pen. Now, that's, like, that's very risky. Yeah. Na- Try it. Yeah. That's one inch off and you're still in a concussion like the other guy. I don't. Yeah, that's mm. why I never liked that um, uh, Mythbusters. Because they'll, they'll go, okay, we did the math. Uh, baseball uh, can't kill you. And then I would go, well, throw a baseball at somebody. <laughs> and let's see. He's like, it's that's so just safe. Tr-. Yeah. They, they would say, they, say it's, they did some kind of research. And they put a, a mannequin in water and then took a gun and shot at the mannequin saying, hey, our movie's real. When they show this stuff. And oh, they, go, yeah. they go, no, the, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to kill somebody like that. Uh, the bullet would slow down so much it wouldn't hurt you. Oh, it's this like, is like a bullet in water or something? Yeah. And yeah. so, but then put your face in the water and do it. You're so fucking sure. That should be like the, the uh, after the credits. And yeah. here's Johnny, who has volunteered once again. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got a death wish. She's like, maybe today's the day. You know right. what? What are the jackass boys doing right now? Right. You know what I mean? Now, maybe you're hearing all this and being like, okay, I know what won't kill people, Keith. What will? A pen. Hmm. A pen more than a baseball? Because of the rod-like shape, a pen would probably pierce your skull like an arrow and kill you. Oof. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, if you right. see somebody... With, a, with big pens <laughs> going up to the top of this <laughs> Empire State Building. You you make a phone call. You know what's funny is they keep looking for guns on the way to these uh, yeah. buildings. They'll take your gun away, but the pens They'll are there. they let you have all the pens you want. Yeah. What happens when you drop a gun from the Empire State Building? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're in an elevator near the top of a midtown skyscraper and the car lurches and a cable snaps... And the metal box goes screaming down the shaft uh, for 60 stories. Okay. Will you die? Will you die? Okay. Believe it or not, you'd have a pretty good chance of survival. Most elevators today have safety brakes that stop them making a free fall unlikely. But if it did happen, you probably wouldn't die a horrible, flattened death. Oh, you would die another shitty death? What's <laughs> what? Banging Assum- around? Assuming the elevator fits snugly in the shaft as it should. The air beneath the car couldn't escape the abyss, creating an air cushion that would slow your descent. Okay. The urban Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm into this one. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. You know, I will cut the cable. I'm and into you it. can be inside of the car. We're scene partners now. Great. It's on. The urban legend that We're doing claims... it again. <laughs> you and me. The legend that claims you can save yourself by jumping at the exact moment the car hits the bottom, that is hogwash. And yet I could see myself doing it. You'd only slow yourself by about a mile per hour, and when you did hit the ground, the force would make your organs push their way through your body. Jesus oh, Christ. Thank you for mentioning. What if I your butthole was sewn up? <laughs> what if you didn't have an exit? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. If you got the time. <laughs> now, uh, who would survive more? A kid in that shaft, in that elevator, or puppies? Mm-hmm. 
Because that's how you know whether to have a kid or not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a fun little story. Uh, um, there was a man wearing a shirt that says, Drunk Lives Matter. God. And he was pulled over for drunk driving while he was wearing the shirt. I, I, that's oh, my man. favorite Fuck story of 2017. <laughs> who, who, who got that? That's, that's it. That's yeah. beautiful. Uh, 44-year-old jerk-off Elwood Gutschell III <laughs> had a blood alcohol content two and a half times the state's legal limit when he was pulled over. That's awesome. The court <laughs> records don't list an attorney. Oh, really? <laughs> Drunk Lives Matter didn't have an attorney? Jesus. Yeah. I mean, first of all, how much did he pay for that shirt? And did he mm-hmm. think about it whatsoever? Mm-hmm. Was he just like, this is going to be hilarious? <laughs> Drunk Lives Matter. I like it. Mm-hmm. Nothing else is going on. And then as the cop cars, as the, as the cop's coming to his car door, and he's like, he looks at his shirt and he's like, mother. <laughs> it's like maybe he'll think it's funny right why why would I wear this shirt it's a joke if I was gonna be to you the problem is, is law enforcement general you don't know how to take a joke no I'm, I went to a costume party and I went as a drunk man I was, I was, I'm in the zone it's a costume it's a costume it's character work like a <laughs> son of a bitch oh you got fucking nothing better to do so you got fucking nothing bad to do. You know who's <laughs> drunk? You are, officer. <laughs> Citizens arrest. Why else would you be two people? You give right me a now? gun. You give me a gun right now. You could not handle the gun. <laughs> I get it. Here, I'll, I'll take it from you. I'll, I got it. <laughs> oh, my hands are so heavy. Oh, my mother never loved me. <laughs> Wait a minute. If I'm drunk, though... My life matters. <laughs> Read the shirt, even though it's in triplicates right now. I, I'm not going to lie. I think I have a Pepsi here somewhere. <laughs> I think I took yeah. the wrong meds before I drove. Somebody may have put uh, booze in my Coke as a joke. Uh, you shouldn't legalize marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, good. You, you, you have the hardest job. I know it. You have the hardest job. <laughs> Of all the jobs. <laughs> it's hard to be a cop than to be a mother. And I should know. I'm a mother. <laughs> and I hate it. You know what matters? Black people. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is a joke shirt. Uh, I, I'm going to take it off. <laughs> I, this is a good idea. <laughs> and I love black people. This, for the record, I have like one black friend. I I mean, he about, hates I, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just meet you at the at the police station. I'll just meet. You. <laughs> I'll follow you. You lead. I follow you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll lead because you seem out of it. <laughs> you don't even get what I'm saying. That's how fucked up you are. Uh, how you doing, sir? A B C D E F G. Z Y X xylophone. Uh, <laughs> uh, the alphabet. Uh, two of clubs. Three of diamonds. I think anyone who could say the alphabet backwards should be arrested. Yeah, that's all. Why'd you memorize that? <laughs> Why? Right. You... I don't remember that in kindergarten. <laughs> to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. That's true. There is that. <laughs> it's, it's like if you can't do magic at a party, you corner a girl and it's like, you want to see a trick? <laughs> I can drive home anytime because ZY. <laughs> I call it the ZYX party dropper. A penny drop? Party drop. Uh, party drop? My. XYZ is down, but my ZYX is on point. Am I being arrested? <laughs> Are you detaining me? You have to answer me if I'm being detained. Oh my God, Han is writing in, of course. He's from Philly. Aw, Han. <laughs> the, the shirt is green. Uh, mm, I don't know. I well, like... I think that that shirt was made for St. Patrick's Day. Right. Oh my God, he's the third. Elwood Gut child, the thir- there are three yeah. of you. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm, you guys can't let those names go. You just can't. There's not enough Bob Woods. <laughs> There's not enough Michael Fester. Well, it gets, uh, you know, it's like a copy of a copy, and it starts deteriorating when you get to the third oh one. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a weird clone. Yeah. All right, Katie, let me tell you what's going on. What's here. happening? You have a Facebook fan page. 
I do. It's very easy to remember. It's is go, it? Yeah. Go to facebook.com slash Katie Harmon's Uber Cool page <laughs> for best friends and strangers. Oh yeah, because I don't know how to work the internet and Facebook was like, Why don't you make a unique fan page instead of just writing Katie Hartman? And I was like, Okay, this will work, but I didn't realize that that's the URL and that's embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, seriously dot TV. You don't have to worry about them anymore, right? Nope. Good for you. Good <laughs> my, for my you. shit's still up there, so you can watch it. <laughs> you guys watch my video that we did together. Oh, please watch it. It's called um, Life is Hard. Uh, should I dress better? It's a part of like a series called Life is Hard. Just so and you Kemba know, great. I'm not delusion delusional. I was the part of saying, no, you shouldn't dress better. <laughs> I know what I look like. Well, Katie is having a benefit for the people let go from Seriously.TV. All of us. Most of us. A series, a serious show for serious people is the title. It's at Littlefield, Tuesday, April 25th at 7.30 p.m. And it's helping people out that didn't get the severance package. Mm -hmm. Like when Katie did, and it was huge. But <laughs> if, you, if you're curious, it was not also taxed at forty percent. <laughs> oh my fuck! Uh huh. Oh my so god! So way less than wow. we all thought. Wow! Wow! Rough. It's rough. Wow! Yeah. That's like a bonus taxes, right? It's. I don't even. It must be. I mean, wow. like because it's a clump of money. I'm sure it sucks. Holy shit! Yeah. Well, I, the lineup on this thing is crazy. It's crazy. It's Never like, mind that you're helping people. Fuck them. You know, your money's whatever, wherever it goes to. This lineup is insane. Yeah, it's some of the absolute best New York City comedians. So there's a bunch of people from Seriously who are very, very funny. And then, um, yeah, also like Joe Firestone, ah. uh, Joel Kim Booster's on there. We have Cocoon Dylan Central. Marin. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Dylan's the best. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're also part <laughs> of an, an improv house team at The Pit. Are you impressed? I'm very excited. Yeah. It's called Gypsy Danger. Mm -hmm. And you perform every Saturday. Every single goddamn Saturday. At 8 p.m. Oh, 8 p.m. Drip, drip. Mm -hmm. right. That's you how better. Every, every Saturday at 8. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that gets in the way of that. Oh, I mean, there's nine of us. So if like okay. we have to go to a wedding, like there's. It's so funny. I was thinking wedding and then I was like, wow, weddings are that. And but like you can't take off of work ever. Well, if there's a wedding. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if there's something like that or if like, you know, you have to travel or something, it's OK. Or there's maybe like somebody needs a so. ride to the airport. You know, yeah. Yeah. no one knows how to get to an airport anymore. You ever notice that? And you're true. like, okay, I'll just, I'll take you. I'll miss my show. I'll take you. It's fine. I'll wear my drunk Lives Matter shirt. <laughs> and I'll smoke weed. Yeah, I'll lube myself up internally with all the booze, and I'll drive you to the airport. What is it about the airport that people can't go alone? You know what I mean? I guess it's like a well, sign of a loneliness. You're leaving. I don't know. Well, for places you don't want to carry outside of New York, it's like somebody has to drive you there so you don't have to deal with a car, right? That's bullshit, though. It's a trick. It's a trick that we're all supposed to play along with. Yeah, I feel like yeah. There's a thing where you don't care unless you pick me up from the airport. Oh, sure. And I get that, but like, I think I'm over it at this point. I think dropping off at the airport is also a little bit thinking about your mortality because if you do die in a plane crash, that you know the la the last person to see you is that person who like cares for you, even just like a smidgen that would go out of their way. To take the time out of their day That's to drop so you dumb. off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's dumb. That's so just let's have brunch or coffee or I don't know, dinner, any meal. I it's right. fine. And then you come with a taxi and then I'll pay for your eggs. Let's Skype and go bye. <laughs> yeah, the last person you see, I'll kill you on the way I drive so bad. <laughs> what the f anything can happen. Terrible uh rules. All right, Katie, great to see you again. Thank hey, you very much. Hey, thanks for having me. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Please.